I'm very excited to announce we're building this shed. <laughs> I'm giving you all a break from boat work this week to extend the boat shed. No. I this week I'm actually giving y'all a break from boat work and I'm going to extend the boat shed. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Now this summer we're planning on doing a lot of sanding and maybe even some painting. And so we can't let those all that sanding dust get out into the environment. We live in a really nice forest here. And we also can't let the dust from outside get in and onto the boat while we're doing some of this painting. So we have to totally enclose the boat. So I'm going to extend the shed. I got to extend it both fore and aft and we're going to extend it exactly like the original shed is uh, all the way out past the bowsprit and aft past the transom. Yeah, it's going to be a lot bigger project than just the original boat shed is, but I'm hoping to get it done in a week. We'll see. There's a lot to do. The design is modified from a plant I found out of the Louisiana State University's Department of Agriculture. I just made it a bit taller to fit over the boat. These sheds are originally designed to be greenhouses. So tonight all I'm doing is just laying out where I want the footings to go. I'm going to do a footing every other frame instead of having a f footing every frame like I did this for the original one. Tomorrow my mom is going to be here and we are going to dig the holes for these big uh, sauna tubes and hopefully get the cement poured in them. It's gonna be a long day, but uh, yeah, that's the first step is getting the footings done so that we can have something to attach the frames to. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> quickly got all 10 holes dug and just in time for the concrete mix and lumber delivery. We ordered 2,400 pounds of concrete for the footings and a whole pile of lumber to finish out the shed. We're just using Douglas fir framing lumber to build the frames for the shed. 20 foot 1x4s for the frames, 4x4s for the posts and peak, and two by sixes for the ridge boards. Got your work cut out for you, honey. That's right, this, this is a big stack of lumber. My mom worked on squaring the sauna tubes into the holes we made while I mixed and poured concrete into them. After the concrete had set for an hour or two, I sunk the post base in that will hold the 4x4 post and made sure they were level. Level? Just about. Then it was time to take down the plastic sheeting on the original shed. 
Who do you have helping you today, Matt? Somerset's back. Hi. So Somerset, how long have you known Matt? Uh, Matt and I were, we met in like 2007, I think. Where'd you meet? We met in Olympia, we went to school together and Matt taught me how to sail. And I have a question for you, and Matt is out of earshot, so uh -huh. he won't give me the death glare. So I heard a rumor back in college. Uh-oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Uh-oh. Um, he's not going to, there's no way he's going to let me publish this, but I heard a rumor back in college that Matt Steverson had a red mohawk and was known for knitting in class. He was known for knitting? Did you have a mohawk? That was before you knew me. Yeah. That, yeah, he was a good knitter. Okay. Yeah. But you didn't know him during the mohawk phase? I cannot confirm the mohawk. <sighs> Sorry. I think he had like a funky mohawk like haircut when I know him, but I don't think it was red. It wasn't a full on red mohawk. No. And it was never spiked. Ah. Yeah, sorry. You're gonna have to dig deeper, Yanni. I'm gonna have to continue. <laughs> uh oh. Have you asked Dave Bright? Did you see that look? After some searching, I did find photographic evidence. Anyway, back to the shed. Why do we have to take off the tarp again? To see what the boat looks like. Wait, you're taking off this tarp just so you can see what your boat looks like? That's part of the reason, yes. But I also am going to use this tarp for the ends, the end caps. So I'm going to reuse it as the end caps and I'm going to get new tarp that's reusable for the top. But mostly you want to admire your new doghouse. Yes. Busted. Well, I think everybody wants to see what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, well, I don't know, maybe that might not be true. It might be just me. <laughs> we'll get some tarps off boat shots for y'all next week. My jig is ready to go. I made it from you taking one of the old frames from the original shed and just laying it out on the table and drying the whole thing out. How it works is these blocks are what the, uh, the top and bottom flanges are clamped to and there will be kind of shear web blocks that will be placed on top of these that will be glued and nailed between those flanges plus the four by fours that are at the top and the bottom. Uh, you'll see how this whole thing comes together, but it's a very simple system and it works really well. We have a lot of frames to make here coming up. All right, this is frame number seven. We're starting to get a uh, process going here where we get them done pretty quickly. But uh, the two by four, or four, four by fours are cut. The one by fours are laid out here, getting ready to bend into place. These. One by fours are kind of iffy, so we might break one or two. Let's go around. This is one frame from start to finish. That knot does not look good from here. I know. So there's a good chance this one will break? No. No. Lumber-wise, we are using what is available to us locally. Just framing grade 20 foot long 1x4s as the flanges that we bend around the jig. We can't pick and choose each one they give us, especially when I order 60 of them, and knots in the timber are unavoidable. So I end up breaking some of these and they will get used elsewhere in the shed build. Okay, so let's start putting the blocks in.
those nails. It broke? No, not yet. So right along here. We moved along and hoped the split wouldn't continue splitting as I nailed the blocks to the beams. It turned out the frame was just fine after it was all fastened together. Okay, we're gonna take the clamps off. Hopefully it sticks together. So far, I've got 10 of the bows made or five total frames. Of those built, I broke two of the 1x4s or 16% of them. If the breakage stays at that percentage, I'll have plenty of 1x4s to get me through the project. Otherwise, I've been building them at about one every 40 minutes by myself or one every 25 minutes with my mom helping. I'm not a carpenter, so this kind of work is pretty out of my comfort zone, but it is nice to do something a little different every once in a while. Once there were enough bows built to fill the footings that I'd built, it was time to start erecting the shed extension. It's an awkward space to work on, given that we're building a pretty tall shed over a big boat. So we try to use the boat to our advantage where we can. The first couple frames are the hardest to get up since there's nothing to support them fore and aft. It took some experimenting, but eventually we made it happen. La Paz is guarding her boat from vagrant dogs. That's good. We need, vagrant? Her, we need protection. What are you laughing at? <laughs> you. Is it that obvious I don't know what I'm doing here? <laughs> you want me to start taking this out? 
Yeah, go ahead and take it out. All the way? Yeah. That way with it? Yep, the whole thing. Maybe go out too. Ready? There we go. Oh, crap. Okay, why don't you come up here, Mom? Yeah. There you go. There you, go. <laughs> wow. you two are very clever. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> that took a long time to get those four frames on. Yeah, but it's up. Huh? Huh? What do you know? That was harder than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Use a beer. No, yeah, me too. We have a few more Patreons to thank this week. First, thank you to Tom and Doty. They are from Ohio. They used to race their Catalina 25 on a freshwater lake out there. They had a nice fleet that they used to sail with. Uh, so, thank you very much to Tom and Doty. Thank you so much to Derek and Polly who are in a remote part of Southern Australia called the Flinders Ranges. We looked it up, it looks beautiful. And they share a love that Matt and I have of giving old boats new life. So they restored a Sea Wind 24 and uh, a Sonata 7. Mm -hmm. And um, they sail their Sonata, which they call Pumpkin, on a river now. And last, thank you to Robert, who's from California, Sacramento, California. I think he speaks for all of us when he says that he has had a love-hate relationship with all the boats that he's owned. And so, um, thank you very much to Robert and everybody who's been supporting our channel. We really, really appreciate it. And again, you can join Patreon. Uh, we have a lot of folks who join just for a short period of time. Um, and longer periods of time. There's no obligation for the length of time you support us, uh, and we appreciate it all. We could not do it without you.